Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd. So I wanted to speak briefly <clears throat> about the importance of of knowing which water is pure and how to uh, use and purify oneself with water. And this is a hadith related to a hadith narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related to the purity of the seawater. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن البحر فقال إن نركب البحر ونحمل معنا قليل من الماء فإن توذأنا به يعتشنا أفنا توذأ من ماء البحر فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو تهور هو تهور معه الحل ميتته أخرجه الأربع وابن أبي شيبة ولفله وصحه ابن خزيمة وترمذي. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه, who said that someone asked a man asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said إن نارك إن نركب إن نركب البحر that verily we travel on the sea and we carry with us a little bit of water when we travel so if we uh, use that water for wudu then we become thirsty meaning we have no water to use to uh, to drink from can we make water I mean can we make wudu or can we use the sea to make wudu so then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered this hadith or answered this uh, question by saying huwa tuhur meaning the water is pure the sea water is pure and the dead that lives that the dead animals or the dead fish in the sea are lawful for us to eat in this hadith this shows us the importance of knowing the ruling of seawater meaning that we are able to use seawater in order to purify ourselves with that if someone needs to ghusl they need to get rid of the major purification it will be sufficient for them to make their intention their niyyah and then just dive into the water and along with uh pure cleaning their nose and their mouth that will be sufficient for their uh, tahara that will be sufficient for removing the impurities and then they could pray in that state so this shows us that regardless also of whether the water is salt water or the water is fresh water that water is pure in its natural state rain water and those things especially big bodies of water like that are pure as long as they haven't changed the sea doesn't change, but if it were something, a small body of water, uh, a small pond or something like this, and it had impurities in it that changed one of its three uh, characteristics, like, for example, changed the smell, the taste, or the color from impurities, then this water you would not use. And that's the, the basic uh, criterion that we have. Or any water that as long as it doesn't change those three uh, characteristics one of those three characteristics then it is pure to use if, it, if its natural state was pure so what we gain from this particular hadith is that the uh, the water of the sea sea water is pure in its in and of itself and that means that it's pure to use and it and it also you can use it to purify so you can use it for wudu and so forth and to to of course purify yourself and that in and of itself it's pure another benefit we gain from this hadith is that it is permissible 
to eat those creatures that live in the sea uh, that have died in the sea. So, for example, if you were to find uh, a dolphin washed up on the shore, and I've seen this myself, <clears throat> if you were to find a dolphin or you find dead fish, that you could, uh, it's permissible Islamically to eat that, to eat those animals. They are halal, they are lawful. Anything that comes out of the sea that lives in the sea, that n spends most of its time in the sea, and that needs water to uh, sustain itself, meaning if it came out of the water for just a short period of time, like fish and so forth, that it would die, then those things are lawful to eat. But other creatures that live in the water, for example, uh, crocodiles, uh, hippopotamuses, and things like that, that live in the sea but also live in the land, those creatures are not permissible to eat. They do not fit under that category. But these are the creatures that live in the sea, like fish and, and other you know, whales and, and other creatures that depend on the sea completely for their, their life. That they are in need of staying in water. And if they were to come out of the water for a short period of time, that they would perish. So those animals are those things which are lawful according to the Islamic uh, code. And the third benefit we gain from this hadith is that uh, to for a scholar or someone who is a person of knowledge who is being asked about a, a, fat, a fatwa, you know, being asked for a religious verdict, that if they're asked for a religious verdict, it is okay for them to increase uh, to increase for extra benefit in their answer, meaning that if they're asked for a, about a particular issue, for them to answer that and also to increase and give uh, extra benefit, maybe by something that is closely related to that topic, or or even off topic in order to help and uh, the person who's asking the question to get, get give them more benefit about the issue in which they are uh, seeking knowledge about or about those things which they have no knowledge about. So this is something that uh, the scholars gain from this hadith because the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the using the water of the sea for purification and he answered that the sea is pure and in addition he gave additional benefit in this hadith by saying that the dead things in this sea are permissible to eat they're lawful to eat the dead sea creatures so that is something the prophet ﷺ was not asked about that but he did that to give an increase uh in benefit and to uh give to make sure that there was uh, more and a more complete understanding regarding the issue and regarding those side issues which were not known until the Prophet gave the uh, gave the the answer to increase the benefit in another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, also related to uh, the purity of water عن أبي سعيد الخضري عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الماء تهور لا ينجسه شيء أخرج الثلاثة وصحه أحمد. so in this hadith that was narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri رضي الله عنه who said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that water is pure and nothing um, nothing makes it impure. Nothing makes water impure. And so what the, the scholars deduce from this hadith is that this hadith, first and foremost, was in reference to well water, which the people of that time, they used to throw a lot of filth in this well. Uh, dead uh, animals, uh, there used to also be some of the um, the 
premenstrual blood was in there and all sorts of things that were impure. Akramakumullah. And so, um, even with that, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about that and he responded that nothing, um, nothing makes the water impure. And as long as something does not change, as we mentioned in the other hadith, as long as something that does not uh, alter those characteristics, those three very important characteristics that we need to be concerned about when we're talking about purification, and that has to do with the color of, of the water that we're going to use to purify ourselves with, or the taste of it, or the scent or smell. If one of those three characteristics are not altered by something impure, then that water is still permissible to use for purification. It still will do the job of wudu or of um, making ghusl in that, in that water. So you can still use it to purify yourself with. That as long as it doesn't change one of those three characteristics, it is, in, uh, it is still will be considered pure water Islamically and you can use it to make tahara or to purify yourself. And we discussed before in another sitting about the importance of of not taking a, sh a shower or washing oneself in water that is not running, that is not moving water. So if you were in a small, um, a small body of water which people are urinating in and so forth that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned specifically not to to get in that water and make ghusl, not to uh, purif try to purify oneself in stagnant water. So that is an exception and that's what we gain from other hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ, but just that the important thing for us to be concerned with is that when water is pure that we want to use for tahara or purification as long as it its its characteristics have not been changed by that which is najasa or that which is impure like defecation like urine like premenstrual blood or uh, other impurities then that water is still uh, permissible to use islamically as a form of purification for the prayer and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept from us. And those mistakes that I made are from myself and the shaitan. And those things that were correct are from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.